morning, everybody. My name is Jens Bohan Wilson. I want to make a presentation of Vigas in Europe and Brazil. First of all, you can see at this slide that we have very ambitious goals in Denmark. The parliament and government present and launched this ambitious goal for 2030. One year ago, 70% CO2 reduction. How can we do that? Then it is full integration of uh, energy efficiency, energy saving, and renewable energy of any kind, also not fully known yet, including power tricks. But I will make my focus on animal uh, manure and sustainable biomass for agriculture, uh, because it's not an agricultural problem, but a resource for the society. First of all, you can see here, uh, we have the photosynthesis all over the world. Uh, the solar is tremendous in its resource influx to the globe. Here we have all the crop production and uh, plant production. And from here, the plants directly, indirectly can go to AD, mainly indirectly as a byproduct over the animal production means the uh, meat, uh, milk and other products go to the food industry and manure goes to the AD plant and also all the waste and byproducts coming from the food industries go the same route. And then this one is extremely interesting and also highly needed to prevent pollution. We do the recirculation of biofertilizer back to cropland and the energy Pathways go through combined heat and power generation of biogas for vehicle fuel, industrial utilization, and as many purposes as natural gas and more. So, the potential from manure is uh, inevitable, uh, fantastic. Uh, so, we can nearly have 20 million tons of oil equivalent from manure in Europe, but it doesn't make it as it is. We also need other. Materials like organic waste and byproducts, crop and crop residuals, all this can end up in 60 million tons, 2000, not only 20, but 30. We've just passed 20 million, 2020. So, how can we triple this? Here we have stipulations and uh, scenario developments uh, from uh, recent uh, PhD works in our group. And here you can see the base load is almost uh, from 2020, uh, 20 million tons of oil equivalent. How can we increase that to 60 to 80 million tons of oil equivalent? We can do this by, first of all, the manure as a basic uh, material. You can see all the countries in Europe, uh, the, the larger and the more the food producing the more byproducts they have. Uh, here it's mapping on both sides on manure over here in a direct speaking or in million tons of total solids. And if we go to two other tremendous uh, resources, then it's grassland products. Uh, availability of grasslands, uh, mainly the British Isles and France, but also Spain, a lot of permanent grasslands exist in all countries. It's why you can see the colors are even spread over uh, Europe. And even lots of resources here, lignocellulosic material, the straw. Uh, so 2030, we have uh, potentials of utilizing large amounts of the byproduct straw from the grain production in all European countries. As one example, grass from nature conservation areas, uh, the energy balance uh, is uh, good if we use it into the biogas sector because the livestock is uh, minimizing uh, slowly but constantly. So the metal biomass can be used uh, for AD production of, or bio refinery purposes with this loop, the energy loop and fertilizer can go uh, after the digestion process back to the farmland. So we are solving uh, many different aspects. Also the environmental issue where we have 
uh, surplus of nitrogen, a surplus of phosphorus in lowland areas along the rivers and streams, and this we can bring back to cropland. Uh, besides the AD, here we have made a more detailed mapping of uh, grassland areas in the in the Danish context, in the northern part of Jutland and southwestern part, we have a lot of grassland areas, uh, not so much where we have the grain production in the eastern side of the country. So we have a triple helix. Uh, if you make native conservation of grassland, uh, nature first, and biogas and the renewable energy production in a sustainable context. So we are helping the lowland area with biodiversity for the nature conservation conditions. We are producing from the carbon sources, the renewable energy, biogas, and we are helping with the environment for the in nitrogen and phosphor. Just a map showing the very many various kinds of uh, feedstocks for biogas plant uh, from nearly all kinds of society. Industrial uh, slaughtery uh, lipids, uh, vegetable byproducts, uh, animal byproducts, expired grain, and other parts. Here it's the example of deep litter tree uh, treated just with natural uh, precipitation. Uh, so it's just a tree uh, opening process for the lignocellulosic materials. And here you can see uh, feed, feed in, uh, feeding uh, conditions in the biogas plant. Uh, uh, Semi-automatic crane uh, uploading uh, from the heap here to back end uh, where we have the chopping, mechanical chopping system, which can consist of very many different kinds of uh, mechanical uh, uh, chopping uh, systems. Why, why mechanical? Because uh, Biotechnologically, uh, uh, steam explosion and wet oxidation is a technology overkill as far as we have realized. So uh, make it simple and robust. So first conclusion part of the uh, biomass from sustainable conditions for large scale biogas production. It's an ongoing learning, uh, but you have to bear in mind it have to be cheap and sustainable. Uh, and from here, you can see the list and you can add on if you have uh, in uh, local and regional areas, manure of any kinds, straw of any kinds, including black ash from the sugar cane industry in Brazil, grassland products of any kinds, uh, organic food waste, industrial organic waste, aquatic uh, organic materials, uh, respiration lakes and rivers and uh, shorelines and so on. Now we go to how can we utilize uh, the biogas. Here you have a gas grid in a, in a Danish context with the main uh, routes of the highway of the natural gas. And you have the side branches of, uh, of gas lines all over the country. How is it uh, fruitful from a, a context of biogas AD? Here you can see a rapid development over the last 10 years in the Danish uh, area of Europe. In the, for many years, it had been uh, nearly almost uh, combined heat and power production, but we had a shift in law. So we have two platforms since 2012-14. And up here you can see the rapid growth of uh, operating biogas to biomethane and introducing it into the gas grid. So it has been meant a tripling or quadrupling of the biogas production between 2012 and 2020. And it shows a picture, 2011, uh, it was nearly all uh, natural gas, fossil gas, only one upgrading uh, station for biomethane. We already 2021 have this picture uh, that we have 50 plus operating stations for biogas to the natural gas grid. So it can go fast. And here we have the evidence, uh, the documentation from the Danish national company Evita, uh, gas providing company. Here you can see every summer it's the highest uh, of the gas, uh, biogas, biomethane, green gas in the natural gas grid. 
we already have passed 21% of all gases, biomethane, be uh, stimulating 40% 2030 and 100% of all gas utilized in the Danish system 2040 will be biomethane green gas. And it's used uh, where it has the highest purpose, like in the transportation sector for buses and trucks, or it can also be used industrialized uh, in, in industries with a big uh, consumption of uh, former uh, coal or oil, now shifting into uh, upgraded uh, green gas, biomethane, uh, in uh, cement, concrete industries, in insulation industries, and sugar industries. Now I go and show you one uh, case example uh, from the NATO Energy Company. Uh, this truck is offloading uh, manure to a biogas plant in Holstead. But this one is another sister plant uh, uh, on the Danish uh, west coast. 710,000 tons of biomass per year, consisting of 85% uh, all kinds of manure types. Uh, from the municipal industrial residues, it's MSW, slaughterhouse waste, uh, and many, many other organic waste from food industries, consist of seven uh, reactors of each uh, 9,000 cubic meters. There are gas cleaning and operating systems uh, and producing 22 million tons of biomethane per year. And here can you see more exact uh, photos from the plant, but I'll highlight on the, not the fermenter system today, but more on the upgrading system, what uh, upgrading the biomethane, but also CO2 for what purposes. So beside upgrading the uh, biomethane, uh, there's another environmental, but also a renewable energy uh, gain. Uh, the methane can be used in the, shown in the, uh, earlier slides, in the natural gas grid. CO2 can be utilized for different purposes. In, in this case, for food grade uh, greenhouse, uh, uh, firefighting, welding, and even also for hospitals, because the quality is exactly the same as the Coca-Cola quality of CO2. So it's what we call a low-hanging fruit and the technology is ready for the upgrading. You can see the process line for such uh, the largest biogas plant of its kind. It's uh, uh, supplying one third of Danish uh, industrially utilized CO2 nowadays uh, and passes through all these uh, cleaning and upgrading steps. One sister plant, from the Holstead, Holstead site of uh, CSTR, fermenters, uh, and upgrading facilities, uh, pre uh, storage tanks and post storage tanks. So it's a recirculation system also for all the manure flow and also the, all the organic liquid. How can we see it in the context of uh, cooperation and making a large-scale biorefinery platform in Brazil as a case example. In Brazil, you have these two platforms, biomass for combined heating power from Bagasse. You have the, this, the most famous and well-known bioethanol and sugar industries all over the Sao Paulo region. And this platform is where I have been uh, telling uh, where what we can uh, reach uh, of uh, mature technology, uh, biogas and biomethane production for very many purposes. And the feedstock composition is uh, obvious from uh, bagasse, finesse, uh, organic waste, uh, farm waste, industrial organic waste from the surroundings. So the platform can be big, so it can be the same as the two others. And finally, uh, for the future, in this decade and the coming decade, uh, the installments is uh, stipulated in the beginning. Large scale uh, onshore, offshore wind uh, installations, uh, solar uh, plants going through electrolysis, producing hydrogen. This hydrogen can go directly for synthetic uh, fuels, but you can also use it jointly together with CO2. 
or uh, with nitrogen from there, but the CO2 uh, from the biogas production means that uh, the hydrogen from the solar and the wind and the CO2 from the biogas can be new methane, new methanol and uh, other fuels for the heavy transportation trucks, buses, trains, shipping industries. So uh, the future is interesting and very bright for biogas. Now you are welcome to launch questions and I will be very happy to answer all what you need and also by writing questions, Q and A's to me. Thank you for your attention. Good morning, good afternoon to everybody. My name is Tuani Coelho. I am a professor at the Institute of Energy and Environment uh, and coordinator of the research group on bioenergy from in the University of Sao Paulo. And in this presentation, I'm going to show you the main residues of the recent study that we have developed, the Atlas of Bioenergy of Sao Paulo State with the biomass residues potential for electricity in the state of Sao Paulo. This study was funded by CESP, the state of Sao Paulo uh, Electric Utility, and ANEL, the regulatory agency for electricity from federal government. It's important to, to remember that when we talk about biomass residues, we are talking about sustainable uh, issues because we are considering in this figure uh, residues from agriculture and forestry, residues from agro industries, residues from municipal waste and the other residues. And when we use these residues for energy, we have a very small uh, amount of losses when compared with the traditional use of biomass, which means uh, the burning of biomass with no control. However, despite of the advances of biomass use for power, we still have a very small amount of biomass for power. You can see in this figure that only 2.2% of the global electricity production is producing from biomass. And when we consider the total renewable electricity, we have almost 20, more than 27%. In Brazil, uh, bioenergy corresponds to 9% of the Brazilian total installed power with 15 gigawatts against 109 gigawatts from hydro. In the state of Sao Paulo, we have uh, bioenergy with 27 megawatts, gigawatts, uh, corresponding to 23% of the state power. In the previous study, uh, we developed the georeference mapping for biogas and biomethane for the state of Sao Paulo, uh, which are interactive georeference mapping from different sources of organic biomass residues. And these maps are available at our site. Here you have the address. Now uh, we developed a more broad study considering the total biomass residues potential for electricity, uh, assessing uh, the power production from biomass residues in the state of Sao Paulo. Uh, we did uh, the evaluation of potential for biomethane and power production for organic, from organic biomass residues, produced at the sugarcane mill, organic fraction from municipal solid waste, wastewater treatment station, animal breeding and slaughter, and brew industries. And also we evaluated the electric generation from biomass residues in sugarcane by gas cogeneration. Uh, in fact, the surplus of the cogeneration from the gas. We considered the crop residues, corn, orange, soybean, and wheat, which are the most important in the state of Sao Paulo. We consider the industrial processing of agricultural products like peanuts, coffee, and corn, and the waste to energy process after recycling of municipal solid waste. Besides that, wood and forest residues were also uh, considered. For uh, each type of residues, 
the adequate conversion technology was uh, considered, like uh, anaerobic biodigestion for organic residues, producing electricity or biomethane. So residues from animal slaughter or animal breeding, liquid residues from brewing industry, wastewater from wastewater treatment stations, the organic fraction of municipal solid waste, and the organic residues from sugar ethanol sector like vinasse, filter cake, and tops and leaves. Gasification was the technology adopted for waste to energy potentials below 10 megawatt from municipal solid waste. And combustion steam cycles were used for different crops in agriculture with waste to energy potentials above uh, 10 megawatts and sugar cane bagasse for cogeneration and different wood residues from forest. Here you, ha you have the top 10 municipalities with the highest biomass potential in the state of São Paulo, Guaíra, Sertãozinho, Morro Agudo, São Paulo, Ariranha, Pirassununga, Pitangueiras, Pradópolis, Novo Horizonte, Pontal. Here you can see the comparison of electricity potential, biomethane, and biogas potential in these uh, municipalities. Here you have the comparison of the potential from different biomass residues and the consumption in the state of Sao Paulo, <clears throat> mainly residential and industrial consumption. So sugarcane bagasse, which means the cogeneration surplus from bagasse, uh, is uh, corresponding to more than 100% of residential consumption and more than 90% of the industrial consumption, a huge amount of electricity potential. The second one, in the cylinder sugarcane sector, the production of electricity from vinas and filter cake corresponding to 18% of residential consumption and a little bit less than 2% of the industrial consumption. And here you can also have the other potentials and the comparison of each one with lower potentials. And then the atlas of bioenergy uh, organized these numbers in maps, georeferenced maps, and then you can have these maps available at our site. You have the address here in the figure. And here, for instance, you have the map for residues from the sugar ethanol sector, like vinas and the fusel cake. Uh, the dark color corresponding to the highest potential, and the uh, light colors to the lowest potential. Here are the top 10 municipalities from the sugar alcohol sector. And here are the top 10 municipalities considering uh, sugarcane surplus electricity with different scenarios for more efficient technologies. Here uh, we can see the, the maps for waste to energy processing. Here are the, the most important municipalities uh, from uh, municipal solid waste using incineration or gasification, depending on the size of the municipality. And here, the forestry sector with the management of the residues from forestry sector. And here, the figures for sawmill waste, as well as uh, residues from print cutting, like harvest residues. Considering residues from corn, it's a, an example of agricultural residues. You can see the municipalities with uh, most important corn production, and so the important uh, amount of corn residue. And here, the top 10 municipalities with this example of corn production. Considering animal breeding and slaughter, we did it for cattle, swine, and poultry. Here you can see the municipalities uh, with potential for cattle potential. And here the top 10 municipalities from animal slaughter, cattle, swine, and poultry, and animal manure. Finally, uh, important to remember that in this study, what we present is the technical potential because we started with the theoretical viability of biomass residues. 
but we adopted energy conversion efficiency rates. And these rates were assumed according to the conversion technology selected for the evaluation. We also consider sustainability issues as well. This figure shows the difference of theoretical potential, technical potential, economic potential, and sustainable potential. And you can, we can see the technical potential, which was the potential assumed in this study. But of course, to reach the green area, where we have technical potential versus economic potential versus sustainable potential, we need incentives and adequate policy. And so we need these incentives and adequate policy to develop the sustainable potential uh, and to reduce the economic potential, which is not sustainable. In brief, to incentivize and to guarantee that the market will be developed in a social environmental adequate way. Biomass residues, in brief, mainly those who are concentrated in a given region tend to be sustainable. But investment in the R&D policies can increase technical, economic, and sustainable potential with more bioenergy to be developed. Finally, important to note that the electricity distribution and infrastructure in Sao Paulo State is quite homogeneous. So the development of electric generation potential from biomass residues can be a reality in short and medium term, like for instance, in the sugarcane sector. On the other hand, natural gas distribution and infrastructure is still heterogeneous. So several municipalities which do not have access to natural gas and don't have pipelines need for biomethane dedicated pipelines. Georeferenced maps and layers allow the visualization of the energy potential from biomass residues. It's important to identify adequate strategies and to evaluate also the development of bioenergy hubs, for instance. And we have a special project, the elaboration of economic potential of biomass residues, the analysis of existing policies and proposals for improvement. Thank you very much. And here you have our contacts, internet address, and the internet site of our research group on bioenergy. Thank you. I'm Bruna Moraes. I'm an Associated Coordinator of uh, NIP, the Center for Energy Planning. And the title of my presentation is Biogas Production in Sustainable Biorefineries, the hub of the bioeconomy. A, a brief introduction of NIP. Uh, it's a research center from the UNICAMP that organizes, instrumentalizes, and support research on energy and bioenergy since 1992. Our vision is to be a reference in the interdisciplinary area of energy and its multiple relationships with sustainable developments towards the bioeconomy. And our mission is to produce knowledge aimed at scientific and technological development. Uh, we believe that research, development, innovation and application are the key initiatives to leverage sustainable development based on energy and bioenergy uh, fields. Uh, we provide advisory and consultancy services, develop RID uh, projects, and contribute to the training and qualification of human resources. Our work is based on five interdisciplinary research lines, which are integrated and complement each other to promote uh, scientific and technological production uh, based on sustainable development. Well, today, today I will present one of our most promising research that's still in progress, considering the world scenario of energy transition with emphasis to the Brazilian case. The relatively continuous growth of the global economy and energy demand since the beginning of the 21st century has uh, resulted in increased use of fossil fuels, as we can see here in orange, red and black for gas, oil and coal, with the consequent worsening of environmental impacts. Over 800,000 years, natural events did not increase the atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration to more than 300 ppm, while humans uh, were able to raise this level to more than 400 ppm in less than uh, 100 years with the evolution of industrial activities. So, the question is how to meet the growing demand for energy products without compromising the life quality of the population by the intensive use of fossil resources. Uh, 
biomass energy. In this context, the bioenergy concept emerged as a way to obtain energy from renewable resources uh, for the sustainable development of the economy. The biomass energy, one of the most promising renewable energy technologies, has drawn increasing attention in recent years. This technology produces uh, energy from a diverse set of biological resources and uh, provide multiple energy services and bioenergy products. As you can see, the bio biomass energy cycle allows to close the carbon cycle because the CO2 is reabsorbed by the biomass. The diversity of the bioresources and bioproducts makes the bioenergy the field with great potential to achieve the equilibrium of the three pillars of sustainable development, environmental, economy, and society. The technological developments that lead to a significant replacement of fossil fuels by biomass in the production of pharmaceuticals, chemicals, materials, transportation, fuels, electricity, and so on, the bioeconomy concept. This concept represents the global energy transition towards cleaner energy production. Although such transition has been occurring slowly, the expansion of uh, renewable energy targets across the world, for example, following the uh, Paris, Paris Agreement of COP21, has driven the collaborative research and development to the bioeconomy field, achieving a sustainable a uh, stable and affordable global energy system will require a collaborative and systematic approach to solving problems and exploiting opportunities. In this map, we can see in dark blue the countries with higher energy transition index of the last two years. These countries have some common aspects, stable regulatory frameworks, innovative business environments capable of attracting investment and a strong political commitment to energy transition. By contrast, countries at the bottom of the ranking in orange often lack effective regulatory frameworks and suffer from political instability. Brazil is in the intermediate position, despite of all its potential to be practically 100% based on bioeconomy. Within this scenario, biogas from anaerobic digestion process, the AD process, stands out as a multifunctional biotechnology that uses residual biomass or waste to produce energy and value added by products. The exploitation of residual biomass as a raw material ensures biogas production from AD being a key to convert the traditional linear economy to the sustainable circular one. The multifunctionality of biogas concept is its clearest strength. Sustainable biogas system offers solutions for treatment management of organic waste. So with the biodigestion, we have the environmental liability. And the biogas system also allow the conversion of low value material to higher value material, for example, the digestate that is used as biofertilizer in the production of bioenergy and biofuels from the biogas. At the same time, as it adds economic value to waste, biogas production process promotes the environmental decarbonization, being one of the unique biotechnologies capable of achieving a negative carbon footprint, as you can see in this graphic. These data are from the American National, National Gas, Natural Gas and California Air Resources Board. And in green, we have cases about biomethane, here uh, is named as renewable natural gas, from different residual biomass compared to diesel, hydrogen, and electricity in blue as transportation fuels. The carbon intensity rate for biomethane is lower for all the cases, and even negative in the case of food waste and dairy waste, which means that the whole process of biogas production emits lower amounts of CO2 than it produces. Well, we know the advantages of the biogas technology, but how does it work? The residual biomass are fed in an aerobic uh, reactor where the biological process occurs. As it performed from the symbiosis of different microorganisms, the environmental and operational conditions of the reactor must be strictly controlled for the effective biogas production. The organic fraction of the wastes are converted in biogas rich in methane, uh, which varies according to the substrate characteristics. The biogas can be used for heating or electricity or can be upgraded to biomethane, which is similar to natural gas 
or the renewable natural gas. So biomethane is a biofuel. The liquid and solid part from the anaerobic digester are known as the digestate, which can be applied as fertilizer uh, for soil amendments or a livestock bedding. The biogas technology depends on the organic content of substrates to be converted into biogas. Being their chemical compositions and biodegradability, the key factors for methane production. Combining substrates in anaerobic co-digestion process is an alternative to enhance methane production from nutritional complementation and minimization of operational constraints when compared to the use of a single uh, substrate for AD in some cases. For example, co-digestion was already recommended to overcome operational difficulties in digesting solid wastes within the mix of agricultural byproduct as a straw and livestock manure which provided the nutrient balance for uh, biogas production. Other advantages of co-digestion is the improvement of biological stabilization process, the nutrient balancing, balancing and uh, the economic advantages from the fact of sharing apparatus and costs, uh, that is the cost sharing module. Biogas technology, bio-based economy and circular economy are strongly connected. The multiple functions of biogas technology make it the hub of a circular bioeconomy, occupying the last step in a cascaded biomass system. It creates value from previously wasted materials and ensures uh, environmental sustainability and potential for financial gain for the local community. As uh, we can see here, the biogas in the center, where it receives the wastes from different sectors, industrial, agricultural, uh, livestock and urban sectors, and gives back bioenergy and bioproducts, solving the problem of uh, waste disposal by transforming through upcycling to a high value product stream. Uh, in this perspective, the waste stream is seen as a feedstock for bi a biotechnological process which can provide high value or bulk products for uh, and energy to be used by different markets in a synergistic model. It's part of a more comprehensive concept known as industrial symbiosis, an eco-industrial park, which consists of delimited regions where groups of companies cooperating uh, with each other and with local communities, sharing resources to reduce waste and pollution and to create environmental quality and economic gains in order to stimulate the sustainable uh, development. As I said before, biogas can be the hub of this model. In developed countries, we have some of this concept already applied, such as Denmark, the Netherlands, and the UK. But in Brazil, we have the opportunity to expand the border of this concept to the agro-industry, as it plays an imp important role in the country, accounting for more than 20% of the gross domestic product uh, almost 40% of all the employment and more than 40% of uh, exports. So Brazil is a strategic global player uh, in, this, in this sector. Uh, the favorable environmental conditions and the availability of cultivable low land allow Brazil to have a natural vocation for this sector, although some challenges still need to be overpassed to reach uh, fully exploitation. Great opportunities can be seen in the biotechnology field to leverage growth in the near in a near future, following the adopted model of agricultural development based on science. In this constant context, Brazil technology could contribute to this growth as a huge potential is hidden in this sector. Considering only the sugarcane sector, the annual biogas potential from uh, VNAS and other sugarcane byproducts as filter cake in surplus bags is more than 40 billion cubic meters of biogas. Wastes from the remaining agro-industries and livestock reaches more than thir uh, 37 uh, billion cubic meters of biogas per year. In other words, uh, agro-industry could be responsible for more than 90% of biogas production potential in Brazil, and if all the biogas was converted to electricity, it would be sufficient to supply almost 40% of the national uh, electric energy demand, or in the case of biomethane, it would supply 70% of the national 
uh, diesel demand. Within this Brazilian contextualization, this work provided a conceptual understanding of biogas technology, bioenergy, biofuel system, and bioeconomy in an innovative model of agroindustrial symbiosis. A synergy model between an integrated first and second generation sugarcane ethanol meal, a soil biodiesel plant, and the algae production plant was outlined from biogas technology, which, which would be the hub of this model. In this model, co-digestion of residues from ethanol, uh, biodiesel, and algae plants in black line provides energy from biogas and fertilizer from digestate. As sugarcane biorefineries are energy self-sufficient by burning bags, biodiesel plant takes advantage of electricity from biogas, while both share the digestating sugarcane and soil fields. Algae production plant receives biogas prior to its energy conversion to provide CO2 to algae photosynthesis, and thus biogas purification is achieved. In the case of upgrade to biomethane, it could be used for replacing the diesel used in the agricultural operations in the sugarcane mill. Deeper analyses are still have been performed by, by our group for different scenarios, but the first results indicated the possibility of keeping biogas production throughout the year, including the period of sugarcane of season, uh, through the residues co digested. The biogas plant could reach an installed capacity of almost 60 megawatts, which is equivalent to the uh, generation of electricity for a population of more than six. 100,000 inhabitants. So concluding within this model, we could achieve considerable energy upgrade allied to integral and sustainable waste management in part of the Brazilian agro-industry. Thanks for your attention. Hello guys, it's a pleasure to be here with you. I'm Alessandro Gardaman. Uh, I'm the current uh, chairman of the Brazilian Biogas Association, Abiogas. And it's a pleasure to be here with you guys uh, to talk about the sugarcane industry and its biogas potential, especially in the state of Sao Paulo. So please, uh, let's start and uh, we'll chat at the end and if you have any questions. So the National Biogas Association uh, started small in 2013 with less than 10 associates. Today, we are almost 80. Uh, from the whole uh, value chain of the biogas, from technology providers, equipment suppliers, developers, and people that are interested in the solution, be it for a waste disposal or also energy use or biomethane in diesel substitution and fleets and so on. So it's a pretty uh, comprehensive uh, ecosystem to develop uh, the, the biogas industry in Brazil. Uh, for sure, Brazil has the biggest uh, biogas potential worldwide, non-used biogas potential worldwide. Uh, we are, uh, of course, we have 200 million people, so the sanitation problem is a huge potential. But differently uh, from other parts of the world, uh, since we have this agro-industry here that's uh, huge, uh, and especially the sugarcane industry, uh, sanitation is here only a part of the potential uh, only today with non-used uh, organic waste uh, from the agro-industry and the sugarcane industry, we could produce uh, more than 100 million cubic meters of biomethane a day. That's equivalent at more than, uh, I will talk about equivalence, but this is a huge potential. Uh, and if you talk biomass, if you talk sugarcane, you talk Brazil and uh, almost 50% or more than 50% of this potential is concentrated in the sugarcane industry uh, with, uh, and we're talking just about ways that have none other energetic use. So it's really a huge potential and this is the potential of the waste already produced today. Uh, we are not talking about uh, the increase in, in production that we foresee in the next 10 years. So there is more production, more waste, more biogas potential. So it's a really, uh, a, huge opportunity, uh, especially uh, in the sugarcane industry, only Vinas filter cake uh, and uh, straw uh, represents almost 30 million cubic meters of methane a day, a little bit more in Brazil, but especially uh, the state of Sao Paulo is 60% of the sugarcane in Brazil, so almost 
um, uh, 22, 23 million cubic meters of methane a day. Uh, it's uh, is the potential here in Brazil only with this waste that have none other economic energy use today. It's really uh, it's a great opportunity to have the energy use and also the 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 production of uh, organic fertilizer uh, in the production of the biomass. Uh, interesting part, of course, is that this potential in the state of Sao Paulo is concentrated in only 170 um, uh, uh, sugar uh, and ethanol plants. So this is a very concentrated with the logistics in place uh, in the heart of the industrial potential uh, state uh, of Sao Paulo. Uh, almost 40% uh, of the Brazilian GDP is concentrated in, in the state of Sao Paulo something around 35%. So it's really a, a huge potential. And if we look at the state of Sao Paulo itself, uh, it's really huge. Uh, Sao Paulo state consumes 30, 35% of the electricity of Brazil, and we could substitute 35% almost of the energy produced, uh, consumed in the state of Sao Paulo, only uh, with the waste from the biogas. But if you look at the diesel consumption, almost 80 or more than 80% of the, the diesel potential uh, consumed in Brazil, you could substitute with biomethane in the state of Sao Paulo. So it's really huge. And, uh, and of course with LPG, Brazil has a, a, a diesel we import, and, uh, but in the LPG segment, uh, it's even worse our international dependency and also our lack of uh, infrastructure uh, we have a, a very uh, expensive LPG, so we could almost uh, substitute five times the whole consumption of LPG in the state of Sao Paulo. So this is a huge opportunity. Uh, we could reduce uh, almost, uh, with this volume, almost all the import of LPG or diesel in Brazil today with only the waste non-used in the state of Sao Paulo. And still, we are not using all the waste. We still leave, uh, we still leave the, enough straw on the fields uh, to cover it, uh, like for agronomic uh, recommendations. So it's really uh, uh, a no-brainer today to do biogas in the sugarcane industry in the state of Sao Paulo. So I think uh, very interesting is the Nova View program. I think you've heard about it. Uh, it's an extremely modern cap and trade program, uh, life cycle analysis. A biomethane by this has the best uh, carbon footprint in, in, in Brazil. Uh, and I think integrated the sugarcane industry, we have uh, two, two possibilities. One is you, by producing biomethane, you have uh, a better uh, carbon footprint or you have the best carbon footprint, uh, almost carbon neutral with the biomethane CBUs, or this is our carbon credit, how it's called here in Brazil. But also you could have a better uh, carbon intensity for a better CI for the ethanol, first generation ethanol produced, uh, if you integrate the biogas production into that. This is a great uh, opportunity. And I think that we could dream about uh, first generation ethanol carbon neutral. So this might make a big, big game changer. Uh, this is, uh, of course, our dream. Uh, Brazil, uh, the, the gray, uh, the gray uh, lines, are the existing pipelines in Brazil. Uh, the green and the red ones are the planned ones, but they've been planned already for 20 years. And the, the purple area is the area uh, where the biogas uh, offer its, uh, its biggest, so concentrated. So we can really produce uh, biogas, whereas there's complementary to the natural, natural gas, gas infrastructure and also uh, uh, complementing this gas infrastructure and also producing it where Brazil grows. So Brazil is growing the agro industry, and I think this is a uh, huge potential. It's happening the biomethane. So biomethane, you have less emissions, CO2 emissions, but you have also almost 99% uh, reduction in NOx and SOx emissions and particulates, and uh, reduce in noise. Uh, 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 you, autonomy, uh, it's uh, feasible with compressed natural gas and re, uh, liquefied natural gas. So, and we can do this, uh, reduce 95% of carbon emissions in the Renault Bill program, but also uh, reducing significantly the cost uh, with local production. We have extremely case 
this is yet now happening uh, here in Brazil. Uh, Scania with Citrosuco, uh, Scania is producing here in Brazil uh, uh, natural gas or biomethane products yet uh, already started last year. Uh, New Holland will, will start selling uh, tractors next year commercially here in Brazil, so it's happening pretty fast. Uh, we have a very interesting program uh, with the Cocal project in partnership with the Gas Brasiliano, that's the gas natural gas distributor here in the state of Sao Paulo or in the interior of Sao Paulo, where most sugar canes are. And they are developing uh, uh, isolated pipeline uh, 50 kilometers long for the state of, uh, for the city of uh, Prudente Prudente, that's 250 kilometers away from the, uh, the infrastructure and existing infrastructure. Uh, for natural gas. So it's really an isolated system uh, only based on renewable methane. So this is uh, a once, uh, you know, uh, it's a first time project uh, running very fast. Uh, also, high easing, uh, uh, one of the uh, biggest, or actually the world's biggest uh, ethanol, uh, sugarcane ethanol and sugar producer, but also a big player in the uh, renewable energy sector, so uh, almost two gigawatts of installed capacity of cogeneration. It's also produced, this is uh, one of the biggest biogas plant production, productions uh, facilities worldwide, almost 21 megawatts of installed capacity. So uh, it's running and it's operating since December, uh, uh, almost uh, 200 million rise investment uh, and it's uh, running uh, well, and then there are several programs holding. Uh, there is a, this is the state of Sao Paulo, Paraná, also in the sugarcane industry, Tamboara plant, where you used uh, biogas to produce biomethane uh, in a small scale. Uh, Olympia is a great project from uh, the Tereos company with, uh, with uh, together with Zagi, that's um, uh, also a biogas developer and implementer. They are working uh, to develop also in the sugarcane industry using DNAS as a substrate uh, near to Ribenopit. So really complementary to existing gas infrastructure. So this is it, guys. Thank you very much for your attention. We'll chat further on and please uh, get in touch with abiogas, abiogas.org.br, uh, whatever questions you have. It's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, see you soon, guys. Bye-bye.